Hey guys, Morten Henning from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we're taking you through a workflow between ZBrush and Blender using the Go Blender add-on. And we'll also be showing you a few tips on how to optimize your project when you're going between the two and generally good practices when exporting and importing into Blender. So this is very exciting. So let's jump into Blender and ZBrush. So the first part of this video, we're just going to do the boring thing that everyone hates in all videos is we're going to show you how to actually install this. Now, if you don't want to watch this, just click the chapter marker to go where we actually start using the, the add on. So first off, follow the link in the description that goes to this GitHub. Just click on code and download the zip. Now, all the instructions are also on this Git. If you want to run through them, I found them a little confusing the first time I read through them. So that's why we're doing this video now. So after everything's downloaded, you just install this like any other Blender add-on. Go to Edit Preferences, and then you just hit Install and find the directory. Now, after you've done that, search for GOB. It's going to pop up in your add-ons. Simply enable it, and if you don't have Auto Save Preferences on, just hit Save Preferences. Now, one thing you'll notice is if you expand this, you're going to have a few settings, and you might want to play around with this depending on the kind of workflow that you, you're doing. For me, I'll just leave everything at default, especially for the import, but you might not want polypaint to be written to your objects, for example, so you have control over that uh, from within this menu. Now, after it's enabled, two new UI menus have been added, export and import. And in order to set everything up correctly, what you're first gonna have to do is, I don't know, just get an object or something, and then hit export. Upon first export, this is gonna open a dialog box and it'll send everything or set everything up correctly to, to ZBrush. It'll find the ZBrush folder or the Pixel Logic folder and you just choose the version that you want. For me, 21, ZBrush, and now everything's been set up correctly. Now, once I hit export again, let's maybe take a more exciting object like a sphere, like this, hit export again, this is now gonna be sent over to ZBrush. And there we go. Now this has been imported into ZBrush and we can make changes like, uh, like we normally would here, like that. Now, in order to get it back into Blender again, if this is your first setup, and if you've never worked with GoZ before, which is the default uh, plugin in ZBrush, simply hit this key over here, which is GoZ, uh, if you've never pressed it before, this R here is the dialog for it. If I press this and I've never done it, this dialog box is going to pop up. Now you can see Blender is selected. Blender might not pop up in, in the wizard that is presented to you in the beginning. Just go through. It doesn't matter. Blender will be registered anyway. So just click there and then we'll hit go Z. Go back to Blender and now hit the import button. And now once the import button is active, it's sort of constantly listening for, for an update to the model. You can disable this if you don't want it to be listening all the time, but this just sort of ensures a, a live link, if you will. Okay, so now let's look at this add-on in, in action with an actual project. So this here is from an upcoming video where we show you how to sculpt Skull Kit with Majora's Mask on it, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But let's say we wanted to do some tweaks to something like the mask, for example. Let's select the mask and let's isolate it so we just look at this. So the way Go Z or Go B in this case will work is that it'll look at your object and if there's polypaint or textures connected to it, it will export that. And it will also export from the lowest subdivision level. So in my case, this is what's gonna be exported. So let's just give it a shot. Hit Go Z again. It'll go through all the sub tools because I'm just hitting Go Z. If you hit all, it will actually export all of them and visible is just for the visible sub tools. Head back over to Blender, hit import, and now you can see your object appears. Let's just change the viewport and you can see that it has the textures applied to it already. Now, if your object doesn't have textures, but it has poly paint, this is a very common workflow as well where maybe you just want something quick into Blender and you don't necessarily want to give it UVs and, and set everything up first, Polypaint is a great way to go. Head over to the Shading tab. Let's just disconnect this. Hold Control, right mouse button drag. And now we're going to create an attribute node. 
So hit Shift A, search ATT attribute. Now this attribute node will just look for an attribute, a general attribute within Blender where we specify a name. So for this, we're wanting to look at vertex color data and the vertex color data from CBrush has a very specific name. So if you go to the object data, go to vertex color, you can see it comes in with the attribute name COL with a capital K. This is case sensitive, so just keep that in mind. So we'll just call this, K or it's not KOL, COL, sorry. Drag this back into base color. And now you can see that it's applied our poly paint instead of our texture data. Just to show you the difference. There you go. Now, obviously the texture data is higher res because the subdivision level that we brought this in was pretty low and it being vertex colors, you know, it's each vertex is assigned a, a color value. So the higher res your mesh is, the higher res your poly paint or vertex color data is gonna be. Now, let's just do a couple more just to solidify this workflow, I guess. So let's take the eyes, for example. And now these eyes, let's have a quick look. I have three subdivision levels. What we could do is simply just delete the lower levels. Let's say we wanted the high res part in there with more resolution for the, the poly paint. Just delete that because now we have more geometry. Hit go C, back into Blender. And because import is enabled, it'll be constantly looking for the, uh, the path where it sends the meshes to to be updated. So now we have that in here. And we can do the same thing with attribute here, call, and simply drag this in. And now this is gonna have the vertex color data from the poly paint. Now there's not gonna be much of a difference because this is the highest level that was also painted on with the texture map, but at least this gives us something creepy to look at. <laughs> Now, one of the key issues with this particular workflow, it's, well, it's not an issue per se, it's just the way that it's designed. So all of these textures that are connected to the object, not the poly paint, the poly paint lives within the actual mesh, but the textures, they are exported into, into a directory. This is a ZBrush created directory. And if we just connect this again, we'll do that here as well. If you come over to your color map or whatever map is exported, open it, you can see that it's being sent into the public Pixelogic directory and this is where all of the textures actually live. Now, you could, like, let's say this, this project, for example, I think I have something like 18 or maybe 20 subtools. I don't wanna have to move all of these. So what I would do normally is save my scene to start with and create a workflow folder. Let's see, let's call this Majora. So now it's saved in my Majora folder. And you go to file, external data and pack all into blend. I'll just save it again. So now everything, all the textures have been packed into this Blender file, which is great. Now you can share it with people. But maybe if you wanna get this out into a project path, what you can do as well, go back into external data and say unpack all into files, select the first option, use files in current directory, create when necessary. So right now they don't exist in that directory. We create it and this creates a texture folder. Now in this very messy project folder, you can see we now have a texture folder and our Majora blend file, file like before. And now our textures have been exported into here. Ignore the duplicate. That was from a later test or a previous test. But now all the, the maps have been exported into here. And this is an excellent way to sort of quickly organize your project. If you wanna do this in one go, I'm not gonna do this because I have like 10 million polys in here and it's gonna be pretty heavy to export over. Uh, you can just hit the all button. This is gonna send all of your subtools into Blender with the textures that are connected. You do the exact same thing within Blender you pack the data, you save it, you unpack the data, and now all of your textures are gonna be living in the same directory as your blend file. It's a super fast way, and I think probably one of the most efficient ways to work between Blender and ZBrush. So what if you want more control, or if you have a very specific way that you wanna export stuff, or maybe you don't have access to 
to Blender or you're doing something else that doesn't have Go C, like in VFX, for example, this was an issue for us because we were operating on Windows devices and our main device would be a Linux machine, so we couldn't send between the two devices. If that's the case for you, you can export stuff as an op oh, sorry, as an FBX, for example. So let's select another object here. Let's take these spikes. Now uh, these have texture data as well. But with the FBX, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to be exporting uh, polypaint because polypaint can be baked into an FBX file. Now, if this is the current version of ZBrush you're using as well, um, normally Z plugin and FBX export import is the way you would go uh, go about doing this. But this doesn't bake in polypaint currently. I don't know why. So you can actually export from this menu over here as well. Choose FBX into our project directory, save it out, and then this little dialog is going to pop up. Now this is the same dialog as, let's just export this. Now as with before, now we can import it. Now we have to import it manually this time. Let's go to FBX and find our spikes. Now when you're importing an FBX from ZBrush, usually there's a scale issue. So I like to set this to 1000. This seems to be what's working well for me. <laughs> Obviously, the scale was off a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, now we have this, and you can see it's tried to connect the diffuse texture as well. It didn't quite find it, but you can use it for this as well. But we're just going to be focusing on polypaint. So again, search for attribute, connect the color, and write call. And there you go. Now our polypaint data is connected to this in, in a similar way. Another way you can go about this is with the multi-map exporter, especially if you have a lot of subtools. If you go to Z plugin, hit multi-map exporter, texture from polypaint and export mesh. This is going to export your meshes with textures as well. What you can do as well is under export options, under displacement map. This is where you define which subdivision level is going to be exported out. Normally it's set to one. This is your first subdivision level. But for some reason, if you want it to be your highest, you know, just match, match whatever highest subdivision level you have on your objects and you'll be good to go. I think that just about covers everything about this workflow. For me, the go B workflow with packing and unpacking files is definitely the fastest way to go because it just allows me to do everything in one click and I can store everything in, in a custom project directory really easily. And it makes it really easy to share with other people as well.